Have your Bibles turn to me to the book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 6. Psalms 18, verse 6. Now, God has given me a message, but I'm struggling with the point of it. Sometimes he doesn't always give me the point, so I'm going to try my best to convey to you what I feel like the point is. But it's something that is new to me. It's a new revelation, and so I'm excited about sharing it with you this morning. Psalm chapter 18, verse 6. When you have it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, in my distress, how many has ever been there? I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. You see, he's got to be your God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Amen. What I want to talk to us about this morning, and this is what God has put in my spirit. Everybody say names. Names. God answers to. Names. God answers to. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for every person that came in with a hungry heart. I pray, God, that this word would not only reach the people in this sanctuary, but those watching online. And I thank you, God, that it would go forth, but that it would fall on good ground, that it would take root, and it would be able to grow and change our lives together. Amen. Thank you for it. And the church said in Jesus' name. Thank you for standing. You can be seated. Amen. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. Amen. Quick little story here for you. Anybody here, can I get a show of how many grandparents I have in the house? Ain't nothing better than grandparents, is there? Amen. Becoming a grandparent is an exciting time. I'm not ready to be one yet. I, I still got a few more years. Amen. Exciting time with a new family member to welcome a new role to figure out yourself and new trends and, and uh, children to catch up on. If you're becoming a grandparent for the first time, you also have an all-important decision to make. Does anybody know what the most important decision of a grandparent is? Anybody want to get us this morning? We can open this up for conversation. It's okay. <laughs> yes, you got it, Bishop. That's right. What? Will your grandchild call you? <laughs> you have some grandparents that are good sports about this and others that says, you're going to call me this. <laughs> Just kidding. You're a good sport either way. Many people stick with the traditional grandma and grandpa, and I've heard some pretty cool grandparent names. But the alternatives are limited only by your imagination and your grandchild's imagination. No matter what the grandkids call you, hopefully you find the title grandparent one of the most rewarding in your life. Is that true, Brother Tommy? Amen. There's nothing better than grandparents. I had some great grandparents growing up. Queen Elizabeth, one of the world's most prominent exemplars of tradition, has a grandmotherly nickname that is anything but traditional. Anybody want to guess what it is? Gary. Queen Elizabeth has the nickname Gary. And as the story is told, the queen's toddler grandson, Prince William, he hurt himself running about the palace one day and cried out, Gary, Gary. Much to the surprise of the household staff, they said, who is Gary? And Queen Elizabeth said, I'm Gary, as she came to the comfort of her grandson. Amen. You know, she went to the rest of the world. Her legal name was Queen Elizabeth, and that's how you know her. But to her children and even her grandchildren, she answered also to Gary. Amen. That's a beautiful thing because you know what? There's people that don't know to call on. They don't know his name. And you say, well, I know his name. That's because you're in a church and we preach to you what his name is and you read your Bible. But what about the young person that has never even saw a Bible? They don't know the name of Jesus. But do you know if they call out God, God, God will answer them? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So one thing is I did not realize before I had kids and many of my other fellow Young people who have kids. See, I call this young. Brother. I did not realize, amen, before I had kids that great-grandparents or grandparents, aunts, uncles, 
the joy that they get from being named by their grandchildren or their niece or their nephew. I did not realize that. My mother was named by Jason Harper, my sister's kids. They named her Manna and Papa. And then Adeline came along. Everybody say, uh-oh. She renamed Manna Mimi. Well, the only problem about that was my sister's mother-in-law was Mimi too. And my sister said, the kids are confused. I'm like, I'm sorry. I have no control over what my child calls my mom. Like, she renamed her Mimi. It's like, my mother's real name is Paula Rankin. But you let one of them grandbabies call her Mimi, Manna, and I've even heard Mita before. And she will answer to it. Amen. And then Grand Lady was renamed. You know, Grand Lady's real name is Sister Frances Kyle. And then her grandchildren called her Grand Lady. Grand Lady and Grand Daddy. And then her great grandbabies came along and they renamed her Yay Yay. And Dat Dat. Amen. Yay Yay and Dat Dat. Would anybody like to share what you're, anybody, you got a, you got an awesome, what do they call you? Granny. This is what I'm, this is the gist of where I'm getting this morning. We all know his name is Jesus Christ. You know that? That's where the power lies. But to me, he may be a savior. To you, me, he may be a healer, but he answers to both. Amen. And with his children, whatever God is to you in your time of distress, you can call out to him. And you may not say the name Jesus Christ. You may say deliverer. You may say friend. And God turns his attention towards you. Because even though you're not calling him by his legal name, he still is going to answer you. Amen. And then Sister Gerald wanted Gigi. And that's what Adeline calls her is Gigi. Brother Gerald is Poppy. And then Caitlin is... This one was really confusing to me. Because we always call Caitlin Lamby. Is that it? Lamby? Lamby. With the L. Lamby. Well, when Adeline came along, she called her Aunt Mammy. And the hard thing about the parent and all this is I got to remember all these names. I'm like, Adeline, you're going to your grandma's. And Gigi hears it and she says, Gigi. I'm like, I know that, but you're a grandma too. But you know what? And it makes sense because a lot of times, y'all, we God is his title. That's what he is. But he's a supreme God. That's why he gives a capital G. But you know what? He answers also to his title. Because how many times, and I, and I appreciate it and it's respectful, but y'all hardly ever call me by my name. It's pastor this and it's pastor that. It's bishop this and it's bishop that. But I want to tell you, God also answers to his title. Amen. Mama, daddy, that's not your real name, but when your baby's called, that's like, yes, what is it? Amen. This may not be that big of a profound revelation this morning, but it's something that God has put in my spirit. But the hardest thing, and Brandon, her, Brandon, Uncle Brandon, he's Uncle BB. Amen, Uncle BB. And the other day, uh, Caitlin was at our house. They come down uh, this past weekend, was it this past weekend? And I said, she said, uh, Adeline was talking to her, and I said, now Adeline, you mine and Caitlin. Wrong thing. And I didn't even mean to. I was trying to be respectful. And she said, Brandon, it's Aunt Mammy. I said, I'm sorry, Caitlin, Aunt Mammy. But we got a lot of names for me to have to remember, and it seems like they're changing and changing. But I, if I can just be real to you this morning, God knows that you know his name. But I just feel like the presence of God wants you to call him how you adore him. Whatever it is that you have for God that you can, sometimes I'll be praying and a lot of uh, the term that I use a lot is master. 
You know what? There's a lot of masters in the world. But when his child says, Master, I love you, I believe all of heaven turns the attention because he knows that I'm talking about him. But one thing I have to make sure of now is I don't call them by their other names beside what Adeline has named them. And Elizabeth may rename you, Sister Kyle. Elizabeth may rename you. And, but, but the beautiful thing is, is the child and the grandchild has the right to call them what they want and how they view them or how they love them. And it's not, it's not so much about the legal name. Now, if you're going to be in the family, you've got to take the legal name. That's why you've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. But I want to tell you, once you're baptized in Jesus' name, you can call him wonderful. The Bible says he shall be called wonderful. So when you say wonderful, you know who you're referring to? You're referring to God. You can call him counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. The Bible says he's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. And so there may be times in your life that the only thing you can cry out to him is deliver or restore. And I want to tell you this morning that God likes to be called them names by you. If I can really uh, give you what I feel in the Holy Ghost. And I don't want to do a play on words here because you know his name. But amen. A child or a grandchild names their parent out of a love, out of an adoration. And, and, and God is Jesus Christ to you, but you may call him something else. Amen. You see, each person has their legal birth name, but in a time of distress or a time of need, it comes down to what will they answer to? And if we really focus on the beauty of that, is that God's answer is not directly tied to Jesus Christ. Because for the people, if his answer was tied to his exact name, there would be people that could not get a hold of him. But if all they know is God, if they get to a place, maybe they're an atheist and they say, I don't even know if there is a God. But if there is, I want you to answer me or I want you to do something. And then God answers them and they never once mention their name. Brother Kite's birth name is Alvin. But he has answered to pastor, bishop, dad, granddaddy, and now dad dad. A name can be a legal proper name, how you address a person, a title they bear, a pet or nickname or an attribute, something that describes them or a characteristic, a characteristic of theirs. In the Bible, we find two names God decrees as his, but we find many more names people have given him. There are also names given to God through prophecy as well as scriptures where God refers to himself with a name. In Genesis 22.4, we find Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord, our provider. Amen. In Exodus 15.26, we find Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. You see, you may say you're the healer. You may call on him as healer and he'll answer you. Is that amazing this morning or is it just me? Because when God put this on me, it's like, I get that you know my name, but I answer to a lot more than Jesus Christ. You have Jehovah Nisi, which means the Lord our banner, our banner. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Jehovah Ra, the Lord our shepherd. Jehovah, and this is really hard to pronounce, Sid Canoe. Yes, Sid Canoe. The Lord our righteousness. The Lord is here, Jehovah Shama. Amen. When you find in 1 Kings chapter 18 where Elijah and the prophets of Baal were fixing to go at it. This is what Elijah said to him in verse 24 of 1 Kings 18. And you don't, okay, you can turn there. And he said, and call ye on the name of your gods, little g. And I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Elijah said, I want you to call on the name of your gods. How many times was we out in the world and we called on things that never answered us? We called on things that could never help us. Amen. But any time that you go back in your life, that you called out on the name of the Lord, he answered you and I. And we know that they called on the name of Baal. And the problem is, is Baal is not real. That's right. 
That's why Bell can't answer. Your God today is real. That's why he can answer. Amen. He's real. He still answers by fire. But it's amazing the effort that these prophets put in. They cut themselves and they leaped upon the altar. altar and they put all this effort into a God that did not hear them. In fact, Elijah mocked them. He said, maybe your God is on a far journey. Maybe he slumbers. Maybe he sleeps. And they cried louder. But I'm telling you, it may be just a small whisper of his name. And you may not even have the strength to whisper it. But if you can say God in your spirit or cry, God can hear you even when you say it in your spirit. Amen. I preached about it several months ago, the value of a God that will answer. It's like uh, everybody knows who Joe Biden is and uh, Donald Trump and all of the people. And But if you try to call them right now, you ain't, they ain't going to answer because you ain't got their number. It's like we know who Mark Cuban is, but try getting a hold of him. The greatest thing about God is that he will answer to whatever you call him. Out of respect. I'm like, you can't be disrespectful to God and he'll let you. But I'm just saying, like God is available to you today. And because he is, you can get a hold of him and he can do whatever you need done. But when Elijah called out, this is what he said. And it came to pass at the time of the offering in verse 36 of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. If you look through the Old Testament, everybody called him something different because the name of Jesus had not been revealed yet. His name had not been revealed. And so Elijah called him the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. Romans 8 says that you can call him Abba Father. Amen. Whereby we have received the spirit of adoption. In, in Samuel 24, 8, 1 Samuel, it says you can call him Adonai. Which Adonai is a Hebrew word that translates Lord, Lord, Master. That's a term that I use a lot. I love you, Master. I worship you, Master. He's known as the Alpha and the Omega. In the last book of the Bible, Jesus reveals himself as the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So when you say beginning, do you know you're actually calling on God? Amen. He's the beginning and the end. Present at the world's beginning, Jesus will also be present at its end. When he and his work are finally and fully revealed, Revelation 22, 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. El Royai, the God who sees me. Elohim, which is the Hebrew word for God that appears in the very first sentence of the Bible, Genesis 1 and 1, that says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It literally says, in, you see, it says in the beginning that it referred to him. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. The term Elohim means supreme one or mighty one. El Elyon, God might high or sometimes Lord most high is used throughout scripture to refer to the Lord creator, heaven and earth. Psalm 57 and 2, 57 and 2. I cry out to God most high. To God who fulfills his purpose for me. And then we know the uh, revelation or the giving of the name by the angel. That says you're going to have a son and you're going to call him Jesus. And he will save his people from their sins. He's known in Matthew eleven nineteen as a friend of sinners. And if you look in prophecy... You will find, and I've already quoted it, but he's known as Wonderful Counselor. This is by the prophet Isaiah. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He's known as the ruler of Israel in Micah 5, verse 2. As Isaiah 7, 14, he's known as Emmanuel. In Zechariah 3, 8, he's known as the branch. In Revelation 5, 5, he's known as the Lion of Judah. I don't mean to be redundant here, but I'm just going through this because they're all the names of God. You can call on any of these right now and God will answer you. El Shaddai, God Almighty. That's in Genesis 17, 1. It says, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. He's known as the Good Shepherd in John 10, 11. 
He's known as the physician in Matthew 9, 12. But when he heard it, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. And this is the beautiful thing about the name of God. Anything that you need, you can call him that. So if you need provisions, you can call him the provider. He likes that. Sister Kite and, and other grandparents don't like it when Adeline calls them Sister Kite. And it's okay. Don't get mad at me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I don't want to be disrespectful. But it's like, they don't like it. They, I want you to call me Yay Yay. I want you to call me Gigi. I want you to call me Poppy. And what I really feel about the Holy Ghost this morning is that what you need Him to be for you, call Him that. If you need provision, call Him your provider. If you need healing, call Him your physician. If you need comfort, call Him your comfort. If you need money, call Him your money. Call Him your blessing. God, you're my owner. You're my, my portion. You're my blessing. Amen. God gets comfort out of that. If you need deliverance this morning, call him the deliverer. Amen. Uh, now I'm starting to feel the Holy Ghost. Whatever you need for God, he's got a name that you can call out to him for it. And when Moses what am I going to tell them if they don't believe me? He says, you tell them I am that I am have sick. And that sums it up. If you don't have a specific need this morning, whatever you need, he is that. When you stand up and say, God, you're the great I am. You're the everlasting father. You're the prince of peace. Amen. Every time I try to pray, when I pray for my church body and family, I say, God, I pray peace over their marriage. I pray peace over their child, over their grandchildren. Because what am I asking? I'm asking him for peace. And so I'm calling him by one of his titles, which is the prince of peace. If your marriage is falling apart or the things that you need counseling, what are you going to call him? Counselor. You call him counselor and he will counsel you. But in Exodus 33, 19, and the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. And Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call unto me. You have to understand something. God wants you to call on him. He wants you to call on him. And you can brag on him by his name. If you're wanting somebody to come back to God, call him God. I believe God, you're the deliverer. Yes. Deliver them, deliverer. Yes. Heal them, healer. Yes. Love them. Yes. Amen. Yes. You may call him something. I may call him something different. But I want to tell you the amazing thing while, while we're all here this morning is that he answered to what we call him. Brother Rankin, what about people? This is the awesome revelation about this. What about people that's in a far country? They always give this analogy. They're in a super far country. They live under a tree and they never come in contact with no human and they die. Besides the fact that God says time and chance happen to them all, how? God. They don't have to know his name to call on him. If they've ever held has anybody got any money in here? You got a dollar bill you want to get out? Or something? <laughs> now, you tell me on that money where you can find God. Nowhere. No, you can't. It's on there. Yep, God. His title. It's what he is, capital G. So this is enough to witness to them. Okay. It is put in the heart of everybody to call on something. If God never enters their life, they will give their life to something. Amen. 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 If they have ever seen or held money that had in God we trust, that was enough to call on God. I may not know his name, but under a tree in a country where nobody ever come to or told them about nothing, they can call out to God. The Bible says he will answer them. He can reveal to them his name. 
See, the gentleman who came in last night, I, I'm done preaching, but the gentleman who came in Thursday night, I thought he was playing a joke on me. But he come in and he sat down, and I said, hey, I'm Brother Rakin. He said, hey, I'm, I'm uh, JJ or Joshua. And I said, well, it's good to have you tonight. Did anybody invite you? And he said, he said, no, sir, my aunt brought me. I said, okay, great. And he said, and I just want to let you know, sir, I'm here to get baptized in Jesus' name. So here's a young man, and he said, I said, well, why is that? He said, because, he said, I was baptized in the titles. And so he said, he said, I've been researching scripture. You see, all they got to know is there's a God. And he'll lead them to truth. He don't need one person. He can put a hunger already in their heart. But that young man was calling out to God, and where did God lead him? God led him to Jesus' name. And he said, he said, I've been researching scriptures, and he said, I, when Jesus said, go baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, he said the Apostle Peter knew what he was talking about because that's why he baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in Acts. And I said, have you been talking to some Pentecostals? He said, no, sir. I, he said, I said, what's your last name? He said, Sanchez. I said, are you kidding the Pentecostal Sanchez? Is that pastor here? Because I'm telling you, Bert, he said, no, sir, God has been dealing with me about this, and I realize I've been baptized wrong. And he said, I'm here to get baptized in Jesus' name. I didn't tell him that. His aunt sure didn't tell him that. His friends in school didn't tell him that. So who told him that? Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you. You may be baptized in his name and you baptize baptized in Jesus Christ. But if you don't know his name and you cry out, Father, he'll still answer you. Right, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Salvation is tied to his name. Yes, but him answering you is not tied to his name. He will answer you if you don't even know who his name is because that's his mercy and that, that's how much he loves you. Right. And that young man is 15 years old. And I'm telling you, I told him, I said, I said, I said, Joshua, I said, the two, the two step plan of salvation is born again of water. So you're baptized in Jesus' name. I said, born again of spirit. Jesus talked about this name. And every time I start a scripture, he'd start smiling. He'd like finish the scripture for me. Well, he said, he said, he walked, he, he followed me to the front before service. And he said, kind of almost started crying. He said, I feel like I blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And I said, well, why are you saying that? He said, because. I don't know why God hasn't given me what I've been asking for. And I said, well, hang on a second. He has. That's the reason why you're here. And he said, but he said, I, I just hope. I said, Joshua, you can't accidentally blaspheme the Holy Ghost. And I said, first off, you're 15. I said, God is not going to, like, crucify you for the rest of your life for something you accidentally did. You know what that was talking about? The devil. I was telling you, you made this mistake at 15 years old. You've made this horrible mistake. God doesn't love you. God's not going to save you. And we baptized him in Jesus' name. And he, when he was in my office getting his uh, baptismal certificate, he was telling me, he said, this message, I, he, said, I, he said, I was that backslider. He said, I drifted from God. And he said, and then he started tearing up. And I said, right there. I said, you see that? He said, what? I said, that was the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. He started crying. I said, that's the spirit of God, Joshua. And this is what I'm saying. Is there is a lot of people that we take for granted that we know who he is. That they know who he is. They don't. But they can literally cry out of frustration and God is still answering. How many times are you being frustrated? Cry out. Bible says 
that he will answer us. God, I praise you, Master. I thank you for giving us all these names that we can get a hold of you, God. Hallelujah. Whatever we need, God. Amen. You're a provider. If you need a job, God's a provider. If you need a door open, he's a door opener. Huh? Yes, he is. You can call him by that. And he will be that to you. And he will answer you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you need a Savior, He's a Savior this morning. Call Him by what you need Him to be to you. Amen. What you call Him, Psalmist, I don't know because the name of Jesus wasn't revealed yet. But I know whatever He called Him, He answered to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a... I'm about to let you go. There's a, a group of guys here in town that I acquaint, I have acquaintances with, and I'm really bad with names, and if I call y'all the wrong names, I'm very sorry. But I don't know their names, and so one of them works at H-E-B, so I call him H-E-B. And one of them's in the old field, and I call him old field. And we have one guy that showed up, and he was always wearing his postal service outfit, and so, I, so we called him UPS. And you know what? They answer to that. And it's like, you don't have to know their actual name to get their attention. All you got to do is cry out to him. Just say whatever. If it's toward God, he's going to answer you. And that's really what I feel this morning. I've never even thought about this this way. But God kept putting this in my spirit. So that's my job to deliver it to you. Amen. But if you need to deliver, whatever you need when you go to prayer. This, this is some, some instruction right here that I feel from the Holy Ghost. When you go to prayer, whatever you need him to do for you, I want you to call him by that name. Amen. And God will answer. Because it's out of adoration. It's out of love. Hallelujah. I want my little girl calling me daddy. Sometimes she'll come to me and say, uncle. I say, baby, I ain't your uncle. That's Uncle BB. And she says... Uh, and sometimes when I sometimes when I kind of auto tune her out, sometimes we do those parents. Let me say this, Ryan, that is a little, that is a handsome little man. Amen. I, I love having that baby here. I saw him yesterday. I told my wife, I said, this is a handsome little man. Amen. Congratulations to you, Sister Shelby. God has blessed you. Amen. That was just a little, yeah. I had that in my mind earlier. But my, if I'm not listening, to my little girl, she says. good thing about knowing all the names. Because if one don't get the attention, they know other ones. Amen. Amen. If you don't feel like God is getting your attention, maybe you need to call him by what you're needing. Right. Amen. Amen. That's what I feel. All right. I mean, that's a new revelation that I felt in my spirit that God has dropped in. It's like, hey, if my people need healing, I want to be called a healer. I want to be called a physician. And I will do what they call me. So don't, if you need a financial blessing, if you need breakthrough in your marriage or whatever, he's a blesser. He's a banker. Ain't nobody got more money than God. Amen. Amen. And he's a counselor. He will counsel you. Amen. And so let's take that with us. Thank you for being a good audience this morning. Amen. I felt the Holy Ghost. And, and number one, again, to the Steinhauer family, we love y'all. Yes, Amen. Amen. And yesterday when I showed up at their house and me and my wife and their brother, sister Kyle, and many others. I felt such a spirit of peace. And I was in that room, and we were all gathered around, and I, I told the family, I said, I feel like we just need to praise and worship God right now. And when we started praising and worship God, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost came down in that room. Wow. And I said, this is a testimony to the life that this man lived. Because I want to tell you, I want the power of God on my deathbed. Amen. But I'm thankful because in that moment, the Bible says he's near to the brokenhearted. That's why he, we felt him in such an overwhelming way. Yes, Amen. And so keep the sign of our family in your prayer, uh, prayers. Jose, good to have you this morning, brother. Yes, Let me tell you better news, brother. Amen. We had church again tonight. Yes. He was worshiping with us and everything. It's yes. really good to have you this morning. Yes. We're here for you, man. We're here for you. Amen. Amen.
Let me look at questions on the announcements to do that. The coast is clear. Remember the elements class. If you're a new convert, been in church five years or less, I encourage you to sign up for this class and to go through this class. It will greatly bless your life. Amen. Thank you for coming this morning. You're dismissing the fear and the love of the Lord. Greet one another and be friendly. God bless you.